I would just challenge everybody uh, in this room to think about when they fell in love with curling, whenever that was, and what the world was like then and what the world is like now. Like, so much of what you do on your daily basis is dramatically changing. How you bank, how you eat, how you work, how you travel, how you dress. For some of you, maybe not how you dress. Um, but, but everything has changed, and so you're, with that, your, your, your sport naturally has to change. So I, I think, you know, I don't want this conversation to feel negative, uh, because I don't think these are solely problems. I think these are opportunities. Yes, uh, does curling have an inclusion and diversity problem? Yes, but curling has an age problem, in, in my opinion. Curling has a, um, a, an attention uh, economy problem, in my opinion. What I mean by that is when, when curling really was the, the dominant sport, in, in many ways it still is, but when it started being the dominant sport in our country, there were so few options in comparison to get that sense of community. Right now, it could be you know your running club, or it could be your floor in your dorm or your condo. It could be you know Netflix or your first person shooter game or your Instagram account. There are so many other challenges to get the people in that are seeking the sense of community that brought people to curling in the first place. So to me, what's in front of you is a great opportunity to continue to evolve, to continue to remind people why you fell in love with the sport. But it just has to be shaped a little bit different now uh, because our, our, our world is different now. So I think that's really what the conversation should look like moving forward.